get Democratic support to push that through committee? Uh, not to get consensus on it. Um, what we could get consensus on is the statement of intent that we want to protect consumers from fraud and then to continue to work to find out what, uh, uh, for example, there was a bill that passed out in the Senate last year that exempted insurance companies and some other entities. Uh, I'm not saying whether that's good or bad, but they were able to work in a way to find uh, consensus to get votes to move that on to the uh, uh, full uh, uh, Senate floor, which it did not end up being debated uh, because we didn't have consensus over here, but at least you know, we're willing to work on it. If you, but if this is a priority of the Attorney General and yourself, why can you not get consensus from Democratic members in the House? Well, why, uh, it's kind of like saying uh, I have a, a dog named Max that's a, uh, a boy. Uh, it's like saying if my dog was a girl, it would not lift its leg at the fire hydrant near my house. I don't know. It's uh, uh, why, uh, uh, why did we not have uh, 51 Democrats to support a uh, casino only? Uh, or no casino exemption in cigarette. I mean, you just have to work with individual members with individual needs and wants. I, I'm sensing by your, your smirks that my joke did not go well. We'll have to be the fire hydrant. No. Um, uh, just, just to add, I mean, the big part on this with the private cause of action, we know that people have concerns because of, uh, with the insurance uh, and some other, you know, uh, car dealerships and things like that. It's really working out the details of that bill, and there's people that want to make sure that there's certain things that are exempt. Iowa has no private cause of action for, for anything, and that's what the Attorney General's point is, and I think we, you know, I think there's a, 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 at least a 50-50 chance of us being able to do a private <coughs> cause of action this session. The big part is getting, uh, getting people together and finding out what it takes to get 51 votes. Kevin's right. Last week, in regards to, or a couple weeks ago, when we did the smoking ban, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, exempt casinos. Well, fine, we'll exempt casinos. And then I asked them, I said, do you have a problem if we don't have a bill? And they're like, well, yeah, I want a bill. And it's like, well, we can't put 51 votes together unless we have the casino exemption. So um, that's that's the, those are the cards we're dealt with and we're dealing with them the best we can. When, the, when you, along with the Senate Democrats, released some of your budget targets recently. Uh, Senator Johnstall, at any rate, said in no uncertain terms that combined reporting was off the table. I, we left, I left there with the impression that you were all together on that. Is there Has there been any change on that? There's a, refer a reference to a bill being filed and a subcommittee assigned, and I don't know if that was a reference in the House or the Senate, but just speaking from your own point of view, is there any, any renewed interest in combined reporting? Well, we have people in our caucus that are interested in doing combined reporting, but we also have people that are not. Uh, and it seems to be more of an issue with uh, some of our communities that are border communities. It's also an issue with some legislators that have large, large employers that would be affected by combined reporting. Um, I'd say it'd be very difficult to pass, um, but uh, when Senator Grant, when Senator Grantstall spoke last week, I mean, he was speaking for himself and for the Senate on that position. But I think the, the likelihood of getting votes for that, I think, are very difficult for us. So um, we went ahead and put a budget together without it, and we'll continue to probably proceed forward without combined reporting at the end of the bill. A statement on combined reporting. Any part of the budget bill. Um, I, I briefly, uh, back in the late 90s, practiced law representing the Department of Revenue on Nexus Law, which is basically combined reporting. We have combined reporting in Iowa right now, but it's by lawsuit. It's very inefficient. And what, what uh, the United States Supreme Court decision called Wrigley allows is that if you have an out-of-state company that meets what's called nexus, so they refer to it as nexus law, if they meet what's called nexus, which is a certain level of uh, interaction with the state of Iowa, it triggers your tax responsibility. And so what the Department of Revenue does is lawsuit by lawsuit. <coughs> Usually they do one every four to six months. They go after a company that is not paying appropriately in Iowa. And I uh, remember I was involved in this lawsuit against General Electric. We settled for four and a half million dollars. Uh, and then we went on to the next lawsuit. And the point of the combined reporting is, is instead of not a new tax law, it basically requires you to be photocopying your other tax filings from other states, give them to Iowa so we know exactly how you're structuring your holdings to whether you're meeting Nexus or not. And uh, it would make it much more efficient um, a system. So we, we, we kind of have combined reporting already, but it's by lawsuit, it's very inefficient. If we did combined reporting, it would allow the Department of Revenue not to have to do litigation. Uh, they could uh, collect the taxes that are owed from out-of-state corporations. So I support, personally, 
a binding appointing proposal because it basically codifies what is already existing in the United States Supreme Court law, but it lacks a residence at this time in our caucus. Uh, Representative Grants, in fact, in discussing that, as you said last week, you raised taxes on small businesses by not coupling with federal depreciation, and so now you're looking at raising taxes on big business. That's flat out wrong. We coupled for 96% of businesses that would classify small businesses under Section 179. We coupled uh, with that section. The portion of the bill that we did not couple on was the biggest 4% of Iowa corporations. That is the section of the bill that we did not couple on. So we uh, passed the rebate uh, portion on the, on the first bill that we did related to the federal stimulus package, saying that the rebates, that are, about the billion dollars in rebates are going to be coming in to Iowa consumers. The state would not be taxing those. So we passed that bill. And then on the second uh, bill related to the federal stimulus package is that the federal government, frankly, uh, they've admitted, uh, I know the Governor's Association, when they met with the President, admitted that they made a mistake. The federal stimulus package was never designed to hurt state coffers. Okay, mm -hmm. to hurt state coffers. That's why we took the position, we didn't want to help either, but we took the position on the first bill not to tax these rebates. But the federal coupling of businesses' biggest uh, tax benefits they get is under federal tax filings. Uh, they have accelerated bonus depreciation. If we attached it to the feds, then it meant on the top 4% of corporations, they meant a $15 million hit to our budget next year, an additional tax cut, and a $40 million tax cut in fiscal year 10. Uh, 2010. So it was a massive hit to our state budget, an additional tax cut. We decided that we were going to do the fiscally responsible thing and couple for the small business accelerated depreciation under Section 179. We did that in the past. We actually provided relief for the 96% of Iowa businesses that would be considered small businesses. Okay. I understand you right. You have put your budget together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we released the budget targets, what, three weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was a little over half the budget. Mm -hmm. You said we went ahead and put our budget together without combined reporting. You've got a full budget plan? Well, yeah, we do. We, uh, I mean, we're, we're operating on the premises that we're going to offer a balanced budget. Uh, if this gets into the issue of the balance sheet again, uh, the answer is uh, no. We're, you know, we're going to work. The standings bill is the last piece that's out there, and we'll be working on that. But we're going to offer something that's within the 99% spending limitation law. And we're going to offer a balanced budget. And quite frankly, we're probably not going to have a lot of things in the line of uh, taxes. But the piece that we did last week, we knew we could do in regards to the, the additional $1.4 million, which affects 96% of the businesses in Iowa because they fit under that category of small business. It was the other 4 or 5% that would have cost us another like $13.5 or $14 million that we uh, chose not to do because we didn't have the ability to do that. Now, Representative Shopshore did make their offer on the floor that um, if they wanted to, we could draft a bill, get a study bill ready to address that issue, and if we have the means to do it at the end of session, we can, we could. But I think it's um, I think it's highly unlikely, strictly because of the basis of when you look at um, we everybody knows it's going to be a tight budget year. We've been talking about that. The governor's been talking about it. We've been talking about it. We know that in order to fund our priorities, we can't get the tax tax cut happy mode, or we're not going to have the money to make our commitments. The Racing and Gaming Commission. As someone who represents an existing state licensed facility, um, do you envision any scenario by which the legislature would intervene and force the Racing and Gaming Commission to rethink that decision? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. And the reason I say that is um, they're really set up to deal with the issues of this versus, versus the legislature, and it becomes a political football around here. Uh, the Racing and Gaming uh, has done a very good job. They've listened to the legislature in the past and we've put a moratorium on. Um, when, when we opened it up here a few years ago, I think they ended up selecting, was it five? Was it five facilities here a few years ago, about three, four years ago? Um, we need to listen to their leadership. They, um, they focus on Racing and Gaming. The commission uh, deals with this on a regular basis. I think it's much better if they deal with it versus the legislature. What's your take on the, back on taxes, what's your take on the Republican proposal to give those Microsoft and Google style tax breaks to smaller companies. I think it's apples and oranges. <coughs> One, you can have a debate on should there should we be providing tax incentives to existing companies here? Um, we have a variety of 
uh, Department of Economic Development programs that assist with expansion and, and uh, uh, 